This morning, more Hollywood heavyweights are being accused of sexual harassment. There are new developments in the scandal involving movie mogul Harvey Weinstein. New allegations, though, against Kevin Spacey. Louis C.K. James Toback. Jeffrey Tambor. Director Brett Ratner. Is actor James Franco. Actor Dustin Hoffman. This is also the story of an open secret. Open secret. Something hidden, yet also well known. A common and casual phrase but one also used to describe the seriousness of sexual harassment in Hollywood. It happens, everyone knows it, but we don't talk about it, like an excuse, like what happened with Harvey Weinstein and so many others in the entertainment industry. Why is Hollywood so seemingly full of open secrets? For the answer, you first need to understand the industry's power dynamics and a concept called institutional betrayal. Jennifer Fried introduced the term in 2007. So institutional betrayal is a broad concept. It includes whenever an institution that an individual depends upon or trusts mistreats that individual. It might be the workplace, it might be a school, it might be a church. Or it might be Hollywood, more specifically, a Weinstein production company. Women spoke out for years. He was a punchline in pop culture. I turned down intercourse with Harvey Weinstein on no less than three occasions. And yet, he remained at the helm of his production companies, still making blockbuster movies. Chicago! And winning Oscar after Oscar. The other guy that we really need to thank, though, is Harvey Weinstein. For many people, Weinstein was the industry. I would like to thank Harvey Weinstein. And, and if you were a young actress and put your trust in him, he might betray you. And if he did, you too were part of the secret. This amount of power allowed him to remain a predator for decades. This was an ensemble film, and it took an ensemble team to make it. Well, what people need to know about LA is that most people come here to be in the industry. You've come here most of the time because you have a dream, and you're pursuing that dream. And that dream becomes kind of everything. Rebecca Roy is a therapist who has worked with clients in the entertainment industry for 13 years. Well, I think this is a town that's run on fear. I can't think of any other field where there's less possibility for return. It's very difficult to make a living here. It's very difficult to be seen by a casting director and then be seen by a director and then be seen by a producer and to have all of those different layers point to one individual and say, you're the one who's gonna get the job. And when you want something that badly, when you've been told something is that unattainable and you've attained it, you know, the threat of losing it is huge. In order to be any kind of artist, you have to be willing to be open and vulnerable. Imagine you're an actor or an actress and you've got the role of a lifetime and this person can make or break your career and they cross a line with you and they make it seem as if it's part of the audition or it's part of the role. There are many people who look at that as an opportunity. This power dynamic in which the actress is completely dependent on a director or producer or executive creates an opportunity for something called betrayal trauma. This happens when the abusive person is someone the victim depends on or has a relationship with, making the abuse particularly harmful. When things happen inside an institution that are betrayal traumas, how the institution acts can then be another layer of betrayal. The behavior of Weinstein and his staff shows how much damage an institution can do. Take Mira Sorvino. She rejected Weinstein's advances in 1995, told a female employee at Miramax about the harassment, and then found herself blacklisted. This is a small community, basically. And if you hear that somebody's difficult, diva, difficult, pain in the ass, or maybe he'll tell the other guys I'm not cool, then you kind of stay away from them because there are a lot of other interesting people you could hire. And if you speak up, you just never heard from again. Both the Screen Actors Guild and the Writers Guild have witnessed a clear uptick in harassment complaints since the Weinstein story broke in October 2017. It's something that every single guild you talk to, the studios, everyone is worried about. Hollywood doesn't have an HR department. There isn't an office or a person to whom you can report abuse. And while the Screen Actors Guild has taken steps to confront harassment, it's a complicated process. And sometimes things can get blurry on set. They are not working in a bank. You're on sets where people are faking sex in a scene. Sometimes the line isn't clear what is or isn't abuse. People get used to then constantly going over that line, so then either things don't seem like a big deal or covering it up doesn't seem like a big deal. 
So why is the Me Too moment happening now? Is it the power of social media? Is it A-list celebrities inspiring others to share stories? Or maybe it's millennial women emerging as leaders and changing workplace cultures. Why are women finally being heard? And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. <laughs> Whatever you want. Grab them by the pussy. <laughs> I can do anything. It had been a year since the um, Trump's Access Hollywood tape had broken. And once again, all these women on Facebook and social media were feeling com compelled to tell their stories of sexual assault and harassment. This is my friend Eloise. Tess Rafferty, a writer who worked on the pop culture show The Soup for almost eight years, was one of the organizers of the Take Back the Workplace March in Los Angeles. There's a certain uh, mad as hell, we're not going to take it anymore uh, thing that kind of is the result of last year's election. Every woman I know has a story, and most of them have more than one. It's like you can't throw a rock in this town and not hit someone who hasn't sexually harassed somebody or assaulted them. Weinstein wasn't the only person in Hollywood who repeatedly crossed the line and got away with it. These men, and the many others like them in the industry, are the ones making our favorite movies and TV shows. It's really no surprise that the stories we have learned to love reflect their behavior. There was a Cheers episode I saw, I don't know, a couple of months back. Rebecca was being sexually harassed by Frasier's old mentor. You're still doing it. You have a hole in your sock. Like it? And no one believed her. And they were mad at her for accusing him, and they told her it was in her head, and they told her it was silly. Without the laugh track, it just plays like a drama of what most women face in their everyday lives. Do you realize that you are impugning the reputation of the man that literally wrote the book on fidelity and marriage? When women are in control, when there's more of us in the, in the writer's room, when there's more of us in charge behind the camera and at the top of the food chain. I'm gonna kill him! I'm gonna kill you! More of our stories get told accurately. You're luscious, you're ravishing. I would give up red meat just to get a glimpse of you in a bra. Portrayals of sexual harassment as something funny or cute or normal. I advise the girls to avoid Kevin if they want their breasts unfolded. The tendency to hide harassment or explain it away or to not believe the person reporting it, it's always been in front of us on screens. And remember, it's more important that she's drunk than she's hot. The entertainment we consume informs our behavior, whether we realize it or not. We laugh along. We root for romance. We just don't take it seriously or save speaking up for another time. Hey, anybody uh, know who the new secretary is? Cute little brunette with a great hiney. It was never a secret after all. She was drunk, not dead, I challenge. Hey, Ray! Violate her ten different ways if I wanted to. I need to see everything you've got. You got a great ass. Look at those gazongas. You never get a better chance. Well, what do you want, anyway? I want us to be closer. Oh. You mean you want to sleep with me? 